Hey guys, what is up? This is Matthew Day, it's me once again. Welcome back to another movie review, aka after I saw this time, it's going to be on The Exorcist Believer. Now this is the fifth, no, 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 sixth installment in The Exorcist franchise. Like, we haven't had another one of these in, since like 2000 something, because the last one was the prequel to The Exorcist uh, Dominion. But anyways, uh, we got another Exorcist movie, which I don't really feel like is necessary at all, because The Exorcist really never needed to become a franchise, though Exorcist 3 was actually pretty good. But anyways, we followed two friends. Uh, one of them uh, was born without a mother. Well, sort of. Um, it's a long story, but um, anyways, her and her friend uh, go out into the woods and perform a ritual, but they have been gone for three days, and when they are found, uh, they are possessed with demons. So, pretty much it's the first movie, except instead of one girl being possessed, it's two. What's there to say about The Exorcist? When you think of horror movies, one of the first movies to come into your mind is The Exorcist. I re-reviewed re that movie last year, and re-watching that, it holds up like fine wine. I actually saw a re-release of it for its 50th anniversary earlier this week, and yeah, again, still holds up. I mean, that movie basically revolutionized the possession uh, supernatural genre with its revolutionary effects, and the fact that it had a lack of music throughout a lot of the movie, and uh, like the only theme you really remember is the uh, classic da -da 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 -da. you know the fact that you know it, it was so successful of course it got a franchise which it really never needed the second movie was awful fourth movie also awful uh the prequel also awful like the only sequel i feel like is worth watching is exorcist 3 just watch the first one and the third one the fact that they were making another one and david gordon green was going to be uh behind the camera throughout this movie yeah i mean i like his uh, first interpretation of reviving Halloween, but the other two, they weren't my cup of tea. And, uh, you know, the fact that they're, that Hollywood is trying to revive another classic horror franchise, I mean, throughout this year, it's actually been a really solid year for franchise revivals to older horror franchises. Like, there were quite a few that I enjoyed way more than I anticipated. This is not one of them. Yeah, they should have just, I don't know why David Gordon Green decided to, you know, revive The Exorcist by just, you know, like, I mean, William Friedkin recently passed away. I mean, sure, this movie was being filmed, like, you know, before his passing, but the fact that they just decided to make another one of these, like, there are just some major problems with this movie. Like, I don't even know where to begin, like, for starters, it's just... It doesn't do anything new, like, it doesn't do anything to, like, you know, I mean, the way I can describe this whole thing is that it's just a possession movie. And the fact is, we've had quite a bit of possession movies come out this year. The Pope's Exorcist, which was alright, but I I honestly kind of forgot what happened in that movie. And The Nun 2. I actually enjoyed The Nun 2 a little bit, just, I don't, I don't know what it, what it was about that movie, but... I had a bit more fun with it. But this movie, I just felt like was just flat out boring. Like it tries so hard to get you to care about this one dad, because I'm just gonna say it right now, he loses his wife while she sort of gives birth to her daughter. So it was either his wife or his daughter. Something happens in the beginning of the movie. I mean, I don't know, the beginning wasn't even all that interesting. In fact, throughout a lot of the movie, it just felt very dull. And when it does start getting into, like, uh, you notice some weird things happening to the girls, they often do some weird stuff that doesn't even feel scary. It just comes off as just flat out, like, awkward. And when it does get to the possession stuff, it's just not that scary. Because you know what's going to happen. You know, they're going to have deep voices. And even with the effects of some of them, I mean, they're okay, but they're not as, you know, like how... You know, the first movie just, like, wowed us with its uh, special effects. Like, for 70s standards, it still holds up. And super impressive, too. Like, the lip-syncing and all that with the with the voice in the 70s, like, with, the, with Pazuzu. Like, that was really cool. But it's just not that impressive in modern time. And once in a while, it'll just throw in references to the original film. Like, some brief lines you might have noticed. Also, two characters from the first movie, the very first one, make an appearance just to throw some nostalgia in your face. Like, 
hey, remember these guys? Like, I don't know what it is about sequels to old movies that just need to throw all this in your face. I mean, sometimes it can actually work. Like, I feel like when it comes to horror, Dr. Sleep did it really well. But right here, if you just took those two characters out of the movie, it really wouldn't do a whole lot. And with a film titled The Exorcist, The Exorcist himself doesn't really show up till the last minute. And he's not really one of the focuses of the movie like, uh, you know, in the very first film when it focused a lot on both the, the family and The Exorcist. Like, the way it was handled here was just so, like, it's like they forgot that they needed an exorcist to focus on. But while it does focus on this one guy and the, and his daughter, and it tries really hard with some emotional stuff, but I honestly didn't feel a whole lot. Like, honestly, just... Uh, is there anything about this movie that, that works? The acting. It's not bad. I... I don't know. I was trying to dig in, like, what what positive things I could say about this movie, but... I could barely find a single thing. The cameos were fine, but really though, it just it just feels like another generic possession movie. Like the first movie just never needed a franchise. It was a basic horror film, and nowadays just other possession movies just tend to copy on that film's popularity. But right here, I just I just felt like this film was dull, it lacks the horror, it lacks the scares, it lacks the charm, it, uh, it's not even edited super well either, so Devin Gordon Green was off to a good start with his horror career, but now it's just, it's just been lacking, like, I'll take the sequels to the 2018 Halloween film over this any day, it just felt like a bland, generic possession film, and a franchise installment that did not need to exist whatsoever. It tries to throw a little bit of nostalgia in your face by putting in a couple of the characters that we knew from the first film, but other than that, it's... I don't even know why they even bothered with this one. Uh, so yeah, I guess this is technically the start of my horror reviews for this month. Um, I've been trying really hard to think of horror films that I haven't reviewed on this channel. At least ones that I own already, but... I'll try my best to find some, but I'm not. I'm probably not going to do as much this this year as I did last year. But yeah. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Word out.